you know some players are massively being overhyped after two weeks of football and naturally this means that some other guys are going under the radar despite really strong usage and here are 12 players who fit that description that you should try and get before week three and we'll begin with the bucks wide receiver chris godwin and look so far through the first two weeks of the season it's been the mike evans show evans had 19 fantasy points week one and then this past week he goes out there and he puts up about 30 fantasy points with over 170 yards and a touchdown and could have had another big touchdown in this game now despite all this Godwin is still seeing strong usage in his own right in an offense that's performing well and looks like it's going to continue to perform that way yes Baker Mayfield has been bad the past few seasons but this new offensive coordinator from Seattle Dave Canales looks to be legit he's making the throws easy for Baker and scheming players open Baker is a top five graded QB through the first two weeks of the season and that doesn't just happen by accident now as you can see on the fantasy life data right here in week two Godwin actually led the team running 28 routes so he's out there often and he had a very nice target share he had seven targets so that's 25 percent of his routes he earned a target so now through two weeks he's averaging 32 routes run and has 13 total targets and you could take it a step further and compare some of his other stats to mike evans his first column is mike evans the second one is godwin they have the same amount of end zone targets right here same amount of third and fourth down targets catchable targets based on what they're getting the percentage wise is similar the only difference is that mike evans is seeing more downfield usage which you would expect based on godwin's role out of the slot this is a legit role very similar to previous years for chris godwin and if baker mayfield and this offense are here to stay it's going to lead to a top 20 finish and he'll find the end zone very soon and if you actually watch the game you know he should have found the end zone he was just missed on what would have been about a 10 to 15 yard touchdown and we'd be talking about goblin a totally different way try and get him now and try and go get this next rookie which i think you still can and that'll be the rookie tight end sam laporta for the detroit lions he's already off to a solid start to his nfl career through two games in week one laporta saw very good usage against the kansas city chiefs on opening night for football he saw 72 percent of the routes run and this led to five targets or a 17 percent target share as you can see right here 72 percent of the routes when you start to see 70 percent or more as an nfl tight end you average a top 12 fantasy finish and he's a rookie that's a elite start to his career and the actual production that came from this week one wasn't that bad either five catches 39 yards isn't going to get you anywhere for the full season but for your first ever game it's good to see this type of volume and the good news is the usage improved off of this in week two because in week two laporta saw 81 percent of the routes and he saw 18 percent of the targets in this game earning six targets and more routes run just means a stronger role and that these targets are going to continue to remain and be sticky so through two games Laporta is running 78 percent of the routes that's top 10 tight end usage and this is Laporta's only competition in the tight end room between Brock Wright and James Mitchell right here they've combined for just 14 total routes and two total targets to Sam Laporta's 11 targets and 56 routes this is his role clearly and all this guy does is run routes and produce at the tight end position dating back to college since 2021 when he broke out and was actually a full-time starter over those final two seasons he averaged 7.2 targets per game in college and you can see last year had a career high 94 targets these are elite numbers for a tight end this would be great wide receiver production he's a tight end he's clearly nfl ready and once he scores his first touchdown he'll be a top five tight end in fantasy for that specific week so get him before that happens now let's discuss jerry judy who returned from injury in week two and he was somewhat out there on a limited basis the report said he would be limited his head coach said he doesn't need that and kind of both things happen because jerry judy ran 36 routes just two less than Cortland Sutton so in terms of being out there and running routes he wasn't all that limited it led to five targets in his debut for 2023 but here's where the reports were right about that limitations to his role Judy only played 68 percent of the total snaps so his routes were high and his snaps were low those snaps should probably start to be pushing 90 percent in future weeks and now here's the real key issue Jerry Judy was taken in the fourth or fifth round of most fantasy drafts because of his elite finish last year outscoring guys like Stefan Diggs and Jamar Chase Judy averaged 18 fantasy points during during this time with Russell Wilson and then Tim Patrick got injured and will miss the entire season and KJ Hamler stepped away for the team for some health reasons meaning even more targets and opportunities for Judy so those are all the big expectations and why we liked him but then he didn't play week one and he only scored five and a half points week two so now your league mates who own him probably don't view him the same way as they did a month ago when he they were excited to take him in the fourth or fifth round before his injury and Judy still doesn't have that much of elite competition I mean Cortland Sutton has been basically average if not below average Marvin Mims had two nice big catches in the past game but that's just his role on this team because he only ran six routes in week two and even Greg Doltich their best pass catching tight end he's injured and going to miss some time so Judy is worth targeting especially before his week three matchup against Miami where it could be a somewhat high scoring game now this might be your only opportunity for the rest of the season to trade for this next running back and look if you're finding this video helpful make sure you hit the subscribe button as we push towards 100,000 subscribers and you'll be able to see all my future content and that running back's name who you might only be able to get right now is Travis Etienne because look it's not going to be cheap yes because Etienne and had a great week one but after this past week there
there might be a small window for you to buy Travis Etienne. And let me tell you something, you're going to want to do it before his juicy week three matchup. More on that later. Now, despite Travis Etienne only seeing 6.2 points this past week and 42 total yards, he remained in an elite role and it actually got better. So as you can see right here on Fantasy Life, in week two, he played 72% of the snaps. He commanded 86% of the rush attempts and ran 54% of the routes. This is easily top 10 running back usage. So this led to Etienne seeing 90% of the running back opportunities, which would have ranked number one amongst running backs last year. And he saw less carries and overall chances in this game because the Jaguars were basically trailing the entire time to the Chiefs. But this is quietly the good news for Travis Etienne. Tank Bigsby in this game, as you can see, his snap counts each week. Week one, 22%. Week two, 19%. Okay, that's the same. But his rush attempts, week one, 21%. Week two, 0%. He saw way less work. He had a brutal week one for the rookie. He had a fumbled ball. He had a ball that was bobbled out of his hands and intercepted. So this is a good sign for Etienne that if there's no clear running back two on this team, he is by far firmly holding the RB1 usage. And here's some more good news. Etienne played 100% of the two-minute offense snaps compared to just 50% last week. And look, the Jags aren't going to be six-point underdogs every single week to the Kansas City Chiefs. Most weeks, they'll actually be favorites. Like this week when they're going to be facing the Houston Texans as eight and a half or nine-point favorites depending on where you look and having one of the highest team totals on the slate at 28 points, expect Travis Etienne to see close to 20-plus touches and 20-plus fantasy points. And also expect this next veteran receiver to bounce back as he gets healthier and that'll be DeAndre Hopkins of the Titans who look his target shares each of the first week he's led his team in week one he saw a 30 percent target share and in week two he saw a 24 percent target share but the major difference between the two weeks well week one he had 12 targets week two he only had five and this is because the Titans as you can see right here from Ryan Tanhill's stat line he was highly efficient and accurate 20 of 24 passes completed but he only threw 24 times they threw less because they were running more in this game with Derrick Henry and Hopkins came into this game battling injury there was a lot of people speculating that he actually wouldn't play but he did in week one he ran 90 percent of the routes but since he was injured and somewhat limited he only ran 72 percent of the routes week two that is going to increase back to 90 percent in future weeks so this led to just eight points on five targets week two for hopkins but the entire passing game struggled for tennessee outside of like a 70 yard catch for Traylon burks but despite being 30 plus years old deandre hopkins has shown he still got it through the first two weeks he ranks seventh right now in wide receiver usage with a 30 percent target share a guy around guys like debo samuel devonta smith and justin jefferson so bank on tan hill to throw more than 24 times in future weeks and Hopkins is going to see eight to 12 targets and your league mates are probably not viewing him like this right now try and buy low and just based on talking to people in my leagues you can definitely buy low on Joe Mixon because he's had an underwhelming start to the season in week one he scored 10 and a half points and in week two he scored 13 and a half points however Mixon's role has remained incredibly strong in week one he played 65 percent of the snaps and saw 65 percent of the rush attempts this led to 13 opportunities and he was also the biggest issue for him was that he wasn't seeing the third down usage that was going to Chris Evans and Travion on Williams but as you can see here before the week two games Chris Evans was ruled out and this was expected to happen but he missed that game so people were speculating now is it going to be the Travion Williams show on third downs the answer to this question is somewhat but it was majority Joe Mixon who earned more passing game usage and overall his week two role grew to be even more elite look at this he went from 65 percent of the snaps week one to 79 percent week two 65 percent of the rushes week one to 93 percent of the rushes and then his passing game usage increased 47 percent of the routes to 58 percent of the routes he had as good of a role as you will find in fantasy football this led to Mixon earning 95 yards on 17 touches that is some very efficient play for a guy who everybody is saying is no longer efficient he averaged 5.6 yards per touch now Mixon's main downside is right here Joe Burrow re-aggravated his calf in their last game and there's a good chance that he could miss you know one to two games which this offense is already struggling that would make you would think things even worse but we did just see that Joe Mixon even when the offense was struggling immensely and Joe Burrow was somewhat injured in that game well he still put up 95 yards now the Bengals and Mixon opened as six point favorites at home on Monday Night Football against the Rams as you can see right here and they have a 26 point team total this will all change if and when Joe Burrow is ruled out but the Rams just gave up 100 plus yards in the first half alone to Christian McCaffrey so try and send an offer before week three to Joe Mixon because once he starts scoring touchdowns you won't be able to get him and similar stuff can be said for Michael Pittman who look we discussed this guy last week because in week one he had the 15th best wide receiver usage and scored the eighth most points we saw the Colts throw at a top 10 rate under new head coach Shane Stein and this benefited Michael Pittman the most and we got even more encouraging news week two because despite rookie quarterback Anthony Richardson leaving with a concussion and a new quarterback in Gardner Minshew coming in we still saw Michael Pittman be featured and find success with 12 targets and 13 and a half fantasy points now this is good news because it's showing that the offense can be built around multiple quarterbacks we expect Anthony Richardson back but look at this Michael Pittman last week had a 39 percent target share compared to 26 percent week one from Gardner Minshew he's getting it done no matter his quarterback and through two weeks Pittman ranked 
ranks sixth in wide receiver usage and 81 percent of his targets have been catchable despite playing with anthony richardson and gardner Minshew, not the staples of accuracy that's a testament to this offense so buy Pittman off of this 13 point game where he doesn't score a touchdown and buy into this shane steichen led offense now the next man up is ramondre stevenson who he's already a top 10 back based on the usage that he's seeing right now and the outlook is only going to get better now that we know that mac jones has improved and this offense under bill o'brien has definitely looked better look simply put mac jones and this new england offense can actually move the ball this year now according to fantasy life data our official data partner through two weeks stevenson has played 73 percent of the running back snaps and seen 61 percent of the running back carries and even better he's seeing all the passing game work and he's seen the majority of the red zone snaps and red zone touches not ezekiel elliott there was a lot of narratives out there that zeke was going to see the short yardage usage and the red zone work and goal line stuff that has not happened yet and probably a big reason why is he was only given 1.1 million dollars in guaranteed money zeke has a big name but not a big contract this is basic backup money there was a report out there from a credible source saying that zeke was only going to play like 25 to 30 percent of the snaps as a strict backup and we talked about that here as to why he wasn't a big threat to ramondra and so far through two weeks that's exactly what's happening he's playing 33 percent of the snaps but only handling 28 percent of the rushing opportunities he is a clear backup no threat at all to stevenson so stevenson has had solid but not great performances so far in fantasy because he hasn't been finding the end zone so that's why you can still buy low on him. now he does have a tougher matchup on the road this upcoming week but he just had a couple of tough matchups the previous week his ability to catch passes makes him independent of the game flow and his matchup and this jets team did just give up 27 touches and 20 fantasy points to tony pollard so go get this potential top five running back before he starts finding the end zone and go get access to this key material if you want to win your fantasy league the fantasy blueprint thousands of people are using it right now and they're getting these key tools every single day of the week monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday you can see you get a different type of tool the game by game notes the projections and rankings the rest of season rankings so you know exactly where players stack up if you want to do some trades key stats database and the waiver wire tiers and tools all of that and more is what you're going to get with the blueprint and if you want to join the thousands of people using it right now it's very simple to get just scan the qr code on the screen or click the link in the description below and follow the two simple steps these are those two simple steps and if you look right here look it's just five bucks for the entire year not the week not the month the entire year it's five bucks if you go through this route and if you don't make your fantasy playoffs i'll just refund that five dollars go ahead and get this it is risk free so to get access to your fantasy blueprint today just scan that qr code on the screen or click the link in the description below next up you want to buy high on james cook and buy high means that yeah he's performing well so it's not going to be cheap but that's fine because you want to go get him in week one he played 61 percent of the snaps and saw 67 percent of the running back carries for the bills and all the usage all the hype this offseason and the preseason that we saw came to fruition week one he was the rb1 for this team so we saw 18 opportunities between 12 carries and six targets week one but the downside it was a tough matchup against the jets he only put up barely over 60 yards 4.4 yards per touch he wasn't his true efficient self so there was a real chance to buy after week one for a cheaper price tag because in week two a lot of things improved cook played 60 percent of the snaps and earned 21 opportunities week two and in a better matchup with the highest team total on the slate week two those 21 opportunities 17 rush attempts and four targets leads over 150 yards on 21 touches cook is officially broken out in buffalo through two weeks he's earned 13 percent of the targets ran 52 percent of the routes and played 60 percent of the snaps he's also seen four snaps inside the 10 yard line in the red zone which a lot of people were saying he would never see any snaps there now check this out latavius murray is one of the backup running backs with damian harris and in week one he played all eight of the two minute offense snaps and we just kind of thought and guessed that it was because well maybe they just trust the veteran more in pass protection but then right away in week two it was james cook this is james cook that we're looking at his stats right here 75 percent of the two minute drill offense he snatched it right back from latavius murray which means even more opportunities for targets and touches for cook so consider cook a top 15 running back the rest of the way and yes he's going to score some touchdowns this season so go get him before that happens and right now is the ultimate time to buy low on david montgomery because he's currently dealing with some sort of thigh issue that he said he's gonna have to miss time his coach said he's day to day but either way whether he misses no time or he misses one to three weeks he is a buy low candidate because you're seeing top five usage for montgomery in an offense that continues to be projected for 24 to 25 plus points each week by vegas now check this out in week one you see him play 77 percent of the snaps he's 64 percent of the rush attempts this led to 13 fantasy points in 21 touches now in week two you can see this is all skewed only 45 percent of the snaps 59 percent of the rush attempts but that's because he left with injury in the third quarter in week two he was actually playing 70 percent of the snaps and seeing 74 percent of the rush attempts yet again in absolutely elite role he had 17 total touches and 13 and a half fantasy points through just two and a half quarters of play and oh yeah he also had a five yard receiving touchdown called back for an iffy penalty this is exactly what coach dan campbell wants to do run the ball 20 plus times per game with david montgomery behind 
behind his top five offensive line and that's exactly what he's been doing and the plan is going well and look montgomery's injury isn't thought to be major so this will make his price tag even cheaper for you so buy low on this elite role for montgomery that has him seeing 38 total touches through six and a half quarters of play and believe it or not this next running back role is even more elite and that's josh jacobs who i think it's worth throwing some trades out there for yes he has a big name yes he's coming off of a season where he saw over 400 opportunities but his start to 2023 hasn't been good week one he scored just 9.1 points and in week two he had 9.9 points and you might be disappointed to see 9.9 points but then when you realize he didn't score a touchdown and he had nine carries for negative two yards yeah you will take the 10 fantasy points but if you actually watch that game you know it's not jacob's fault he was literally being hit on the backfield as he was getting the ball in his hands almost every single time now through two games jacobs has an elite role according to fantasy life you can see right here his average through these two games 77 percent of the snaps 69 percent of the rush attempts and 52 percent of the routes run this has led to 18 and a half opportunities per game and this past week as they were trailing more and were without jacoby myers he actually saw six targets so elite passing game usage return and this is how elite it was last week in week two he saw 100 percent of the two minute offense snaps it wasn't amir abdullah seeing more snaps like he did at times last year no it was josh jacobs being the main ca pass catching back and the truth is this is just a small two game sample of him not putting up fantasy points and in this game they didn't have jacoby myers and they lost Devontae adams due to a concussion during the game so the defense if you watch basically stacked the box against josh jacobs right now according to the expected points model on pff which basically means based on your usage these are the points you were expected to score josh jacobs ranks sixth he's still a top 10 back he's still basically that first or second round pick and he's seeing that usage that you drafted him to see now he just needs to start scoring touchdowns and the offense needs to get healthier and speaking of getting healthier now is the time to throw a trade out there for cooper cup because there will never be a cheaper time to do so puka nakua has taken over the fantasy world the fella is coming off a 30 point performance where he had over 150 total yards and 15 catches and wait wait, wait 20 targets yes and then you have two two at well playing well matt stafford is doing great at the quarterback position sean McVay is dialing and coaching his ass off all of this makes it somewhat easy to forget that cooper cup exists and his offense right now is looking really good imagine once he rejoins it look puka nakua currently leads all wide receivers in usage and fantasy points and you probably already knew that based on all the media attention he's getting the last two weeks rightfully so for his performances but once cooper cup returns puka nakua he's going to take a little bit of a step back as it'll be back to business for cup and stafford and look just as a reminder in 25 healthy games the connection between cooper cup and matthew stafford has produced 25 and a half fantasy points per game 11 and a half targets per game and 110 yards per game so try and trade for cup especially if the fantasy manager who has him is currently like 0 and 2 or struggling and now a tight end you can try and trade for is the veteran darren waller after a brutal week one it looked like a lot of people gave up on waller but people always forget the context look he only played 52 percent or ran 52 percent of the routes week one it led to an 18 percent target share but his team was down 40 to nothing so he didn't play a lot in the second half and he came into this game with an injury and was highly questionable and in week two things were looking rough the giants were down 20 to nothing at half to this cardinals team before mounting a massive 31 point second half and this led to waller seeing elite usage check this out he ran 89 percent of the routes compared to just 52 percent week one and had a 21 percent target share which led to him seeing a team high seven targets and now this website has him for eight targets it was officially seven targets but he still puts up six catches 76 yards 13 and a half fantasy points was a top five tight end on the week and yes this clearly shows when he's going to run 89 percent of the routes that he has number one overall tight end upside and we must call out that saquon barkley injured his ankle likely a high ankle sprain likely gonna miss maybe up to a month of the season and saquon had the co-lead for targets in this game in week two with seven targets more targets now in the middle of the field for darren waller will open up so the information you have going your way is that in week one everything was really bad his performance and he came into that game with injury so the anchoring bias the first information your friends have is not good and waller has yet to have an eruption game like a tj hawkinson but waller's role is just as good as hawkinson except he doesn't have the competition in justin jefferson and jordan addison his justin jefferson and jordan addison right now are guys like Isaiah Hodgins, Paris Campbell, Darius Slayton. It's not the same thing. Odds are your league mate doesn't view Waller as a potential number one overall tight end. So now's the time to trade for him since he hasn't found the end zone. So you can improve your fantasy team by getting some of these guys in trades who will help you win your league. And you could also improve your team by just picking up guys on the waiver wire. And some of those guys you should target are in this video right here. If you made it to the end of this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button as we push towards 100,000 and you'll be able to see all my future content to smack around your buddies.